I was vacationing on the beach in Argentina. One day, I decided to jet ski around the nearby islands. It was a splendid day. The water was perfect, the sky was blue, wonderful waves to jump, porpoises frolicking in the near distance. I could see a fairly large-sized boat speeding in my direction and wondered about it. I could tell it was coming to me. Maybe the people on board wanted something? Soon it occurred to me that they were not going to stop, so I tried an evasive maneuver, but it was too late. They ran right across the back of my jet ski, smacking me forward into the handlebars, knocking me unconscious. I woke up in what seemed to be a hospital room. I had some bandages on and a cast on one arm. I was definitely on some kind of painkillers and had an IV in my arm. To my dismay, I was being restrained and I could not move my free arm and legs. I was in a dream state. I could hear voices, but not clearly and they seemed to be speaking in a European language. Maybe German? I had some semi-lucid moments between the drugs being re-administered. I begged for information and explanations. All I got was silence and thin smiles. After some time I could tell my arm was healing and the cast was gone. How long had I been there? Why was I still being strapped down? The drugs that I got that day were more powerful and I went into a very deep sleep state. I dreamed I was suffocating and being crushed, writhing and squirming in pain. When I woke up, I was in a hamster cage. I had shrunk. I had been miniaturized somehow. The cage had wood shavings on the floor, a glass tube on the wall to suck water from, and a food dish. I was being kept like a hamster. My cage was on a counter, and I could see out the window. The ocean was kind of close, but there were no houses, or city, or any signs of civilization at all. I realized I must be in some kind of remote private hospital or something. Some people in lab coats came in and started to look me over. I grabbed the bars and screamed at them to let me out, and cursed them. They mockingly cupped their hand to their ears as if to pretend they could not hear or understand. I could see they were preparing to examine me and do some tests on me, so I yelled and struggled even harder. One of them sprayed a mist at me and I fell asleep. After a couple days of this testing routine, I knew my only hope was to escape. Thankfully, not too long after that, one of the people in lab coats left the latch tab not fully clasped and I was able to pry it up by pushing on it with my leg. I was able to escape the cage, but my path down from the countertop was not clear at all. As I was checking out the countertop and cabinet for possibilities, the door opened and the white coat people came into the room. I hid behind a piece of electrical equipment on the counter. It was obvious they would discover me missing very quickly, so I climbed up the power cord on that piece of equipment and crawled over the edge of the opening on top. There was a circular rack with test tubes inside that machine, test tubes big enough to hide in. As I slid down into one, I was discovered. I was now at the bottom of that test tube, being glared at menacingly by the people in white coat. They whispered to each other and then laughed as one of them threw a switch on the side of the machine that held the test tubes. My test tube began to take a very fast ride around the inside of that machine. I was in a centrifuge of some sort. At first I pressed very hard to hold on, but was slammed against the test tube wall. Then I was launched up and out like a bullet from a gun. I must have passed out from the G-forces. I came to in what seemed to be a pile of medical instruments in a tall tray. My body was racked with pain and I could hardly move. I was alone though and heard no one. I had not been discovered as I must have tumbled down the pile of instruments and was concealed. I fumbled around for something I could lift or move to use as a ramp or a ladder to get out. I found a straight thing of some sort that I could kind of move and lift a little. I managed to get it to slide up the side of the metal tray. When I got it up further, it got some momentum and fell over the outside of the tray. I could hear it striking something, making a kind of clicking noise before it clanging onto the counter. Shortly I noticed I was becoming very hot. I realized I must be in an autoclave and that I had just turned on myself. I scrambled up the pile of instruments and tried to keep my balance as my feet got warmer and warmer. I had no choice but to start screaming for help in my squeaky little voice. Over and over I shouted as loud as I could. I hung my head in defeat and resignation. But then, I heard a faint cry or screech from somewhere above me. I spotted a small bird of some kind. It looked like an eagle or something that had been miniaturized too, and it was circling above me. Getting closer 
looked and closer. Suddenly it swooped down at me. I was its prey. It missed me with its first pass and came back all too soon for another try at me. When it got over me, I lurched up and grabbed its legs. It looked like a condor that was indeed shrunk down and must have escaped as well. It flew feverishly and erratically trying to shake me loose. Then it abruptly headed for an open window and we were outside of the building. With me holding out for dear life, it headed for the open ocean. I was too far up to risk letting go and hitting the hard ground. Maybe the ocean would give me a chance if I timed it just right. Even though I was terrified, I did let go of the condor's legs as soon as I could just offshore. I balled up and hit the wave foam pretty gently but was immediately buffeted by the crashing waves, and I was gulping down seawater more than breathing, it seemed. The waves continued to thrash me and drive me towards the beach as I struggled to stay above water. I was horrified to discover that I was now being swept out to sea. I was caught in a rip current and could not paddle against it. I held my breath and just floated as best I could for a while as I felt myself becoming weaker and weaker. And to what seemed like my last gasp of effort, I raised up my arm to swim, and it landed on the side of something. I had collided with a rather large clump of seaweed and crawled up the side of it, barely able to move and hacking up water. This clump of seaweed was my life raft and new home. I ate some seaweed and fell asleep as the sun set. When morning came and I awoke, I was on the edge of a beach. The seaweed had been washed ashore and small waves were lapping gently against it, rocking it like a cradle. Overjoyed, I clambered down the seaweed and ran ashore, dropping to the ground and kissing terra firma. In my excitement, I had not noticed there were actually people on the beach. Not many, but certainly some. Maybe I could find a compassionate stranger who would assist me despite my freakish appearance. Half walking, half staggering, I made my way to what looked like an umbrella with a family under it. I got to what I thought was about halfway there, when out of nowhere I was grabbed and lifted way up. A small girl had found me and was now gazing at me with wonder and amazement. You're mine now, she exclaimed. She darted off of me in her hand to an area where she'd been playing in the sand. Desperately, I pleaded with her to take me to her parents, but she seriously could not hear or maybe understand me. With my head in my hands, I began to sob. With one finger, she gently lifted up my chin and slipped a gold chain around my neck. She had used her necklace as my new leash. I saw her take the other end and tied to what I thought was part of a toy fence or barn porch. I looked around and saw several toy ponies of different colors with different colored hair. I had become part of a little pony playset, unable to loose or break my chains, and there have been many different kinds over the years now. That is what I am to this day.